time yesterday and to a live group in I think almost 23 months. So kind of got my feet wet a little bit. So. Bob and Tom, you guys got the mic to start off. So. Yeah. Bob. Okay. So I don't know how lively we are, but I'll try. Okay. Um, yeah. First day of practice tomorrow. Just what? What are you looking for out of that? What? What are the the goals you want to get accomplished here early? Well, we're gonna. You know, tomorrow, our first day will be, a lot of times we scrimmage, three days in a row. Uh, last year, we had cold weather on the first Friday. Tomorrow, the weather's going to just be okay. So we pushed it back, our scrimmage, to Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Tomorrow will be just a team practice where we work on a lot of the defensive things. Example, bunk coverages, first and thirds, rundowns, pickoffs. Uh, we will obviously do some offense out there, pregame BP type things. Um, we've been doing a lot of that inside, a little bit on the field. We've had some rough weather the, the you know, the last couple of weeks, but just normal stuff. Um, you know, the way I look at it, it's uh, it's just an extension of the fall. We, it's not like it's our first practice. We, we're just picking it up, and I and. You know, we're not there with our arms right now as far as number of pitches that our pitchers can throw. But, uh, you know, we're, we're in good shape. We, we know we need to work on, and what we need to work on is figuring out how we're going to handle our pitchers and our rotation. So we have three weeks, you know, before we open up. But in our mind, we have to have a couple of guys, you know, that we feel like are going to start if, if we started in a couple of weeks because we have to get them uh, on track, so to speak, and uh, so a lot of those guys that are going to start in three weeks will will be you know starting games uh, this weekend, the next weekend, and then the third weekend of scrimmage, and after that we're in game week. So, wondering about the team leadership. I think y'all were dropping team captains today. Maybe can you talk? Yeah, about uh, I think we've got three three captains, and uh, I think we selected those. I don't know, November, December, and uh, have you already told them who our captains are? I don't know if you saw that Zach Gregory, Ken Wallace. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's always good to, uh, you know, we had some some pitchers in there, and we had a couple of guys really close as well. Um, it's like I told our guys, I think we had 12 or 13 of our players get votes, and it wasn't like they just got one vote and they voted for themselves. You know, it's... Uh, which is good. And then we, we took the top three vote getters. If we would have had two guys run away with it, um, we would have just taken two, but really I could have taken four or five because there were two guys, two more guys that, I mean, it, it, you know, how many can you have or how many do you have? But you don't have to have a C on your jersey to be a captain or be respected like that. And I think we've got four or five other guys that our team feels that way about. And, uh, you know, but Caden Wallace was, was one of them. And, Zebulon Vermillion and Zach Gregory. And you think about Gregory, Gregory's been here, this is his fourth year, hasn't played a whole lot, played more last year, but he's earned the respect of his teammates. And it's, you know, it's a combination of a lot of things. It's work ethic, um, but it's also, you know, how do you, how do you treat the players? And, uh, you know, what do you do away from the field? It, it, all, it all goes into being selected to be a captain. So, uh, yeah. Paulette's injury is a huge blow, but you know, how do you see that affect in the starting rotation and how many different guys could you see factoring into that conversation? Uh, well, before I answer your question, is that microphone even working? I don't hear it echoing or do anything. I don't know if that's a waste of time or not. I didn't do anything. Yeah, so it may not even be on. So I see there's about five or six guys that are going to battle to get on the mound as a starter, obviously. We lost, you know, Peyton Paulette, who we, we had penciled in to start, whether it was Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. He's still going to have to earn that spot. Um, but we feel like Connor Nolan's the best he's ever been here. If he can pick up where he left up and left off in the fall, freshman Hagen Smith has done a tremendous job. Um, you know, and he's one of the youngest guys on the team, maybe the youngest player on the team. I think he turned 18 in August, like August 19th. He turned 18 years old. And then he came out and pitched like he was 22. So it was really impressive. Uh, you know, Jackson Wiggins developed a breaking ball and a slider, a curveball and a slider. His changeup's gotten better. Um, I think that, 
you know, he's got something to prove and hopefully he'll do it. Um, you know, there's a couple other guys. There's a couple of freshmen that have a shot, but we have a lot of we have a lot of good arms. We just have to figure out how to use them. Looking at the bullpen, you know, you have a lot of veterans out there that have kind of had their moments here and there. But you know, who are some guys that you're thinking that could step up into like a more consistent role? Um, you know, I, I see Mark Adamiak as a he's really improved. I think he's been up to 98 miles an hour. Throw strikes, got a pretty good curveball. Shouldn't have a lot of time on the mound. A big kid. Uh, he's a guy that could help us. Um, you know, Zach Morris has changed his delivery, shortened his arm stroke, his, his stride, throwing the ball a lot more consistent. Um, the shorter stride is making the arm slot shorter, gives you a chance to re repeat your delivery. I feel like he's got a chance to help us a lot more. I mean, I'm looking at a list here because we have a lot of guys, and uh, Evan Taylor's better. Um, you know, I haven't even mentioned Nick Griffin. I mean, he, I mentioned him yesterday when I spoke, but you know, he's a uh, he's in his second year here. He's about six foot five left-hander. He walked in the door with a torn elbow last last year. He had it fixed, missed all last year, and got got better. Uh, his arm slot is better than it was before surgery. Um, he's throwing 93, 94 miles an hour from the left side right now, and he's thrown live to hitters twice inside. And looked great one inning, so we'll see if we can build him up. I mean, he's a guy. This is a guy that out of high school we we saw him when we were recruiting him as a conference starter here in the future. So maybe he can be a wild card for us because his stuff is good, if, especially if he comes back healthy. And so far, he looks he looks real good. So I don't know. There's a lot of guys you know you, that, that are in our program. I look at all these older kids. You look at you know uh, you know. Elijah Tress been around for a while. Zebulon Vermillion's been around for a while. Cole Ramage. Uh, Evan Gray was really good two years ago. Last year didn't figure in as much. He's come back a lot better. And he's, he's throwing the ball well. So these first three weekends of scrimmage is going to kind of tell us what to do that, at least that first weekend. And, you know, we need, to, we need to get it all figured out before we open conference with Kentucky here in, in mid-March. Uh, 2020 season ends. Players go home for three or four months. You come back. You're learning all the new regulations and whatnot. You didn't really go through that this last off season. How much more prepared do you think that makes the team at this point, maybe than where they were a year ago? Well, I made the comment, I don't know, a year ago that that was the best fall we ever had uh, after COVID. You know, losing the season in 20, coming back in fall of 20. Um, it was almost like we were in the spring. Guys were focused and locked in. You could just tell they were excited to be out there. They missed it, and they felt fortunate to be out there. And we got better. We thought we were going to have a good team. We didn't, you know, who could have projected we, we, we were going to do it? We did win 50 plus ga or 50 games and win three championships and uh, almost make it to Omaha, you know, win every series. You can't, you can't project that. Um, but this past fall, like you said, we were prepared because we got some guys back. Now, some of the guys we got back were hurt. Like Jalen Battles didn't play short all fall, but we knew he was going to be our shortstop. Um, you know, Robert Moore, he's better. He kind of led the infield. We got a couple of good young freshmen in, and they followed, you know, lead, his lead. And, um, you know, outfield wise, we have a lot of good hitters in the outfield. And, you know, as far as a true center fielder, um, it's Braden Webb. I mean, Braden Webb's as good as any student fielder I've ever had. And you guys haven't seen him play like I have because he hasn't been in lineup enough. But the guy can absolutely play outfield. Um, but he's, again, he's, he's hurt. He's had some issues. I think he's got it together. I feel like that he's ready to have a good year. Now he has a little bit of a quad problem. And that happened late in fall, and it's still nagging him. So we're going to be real easy with him leading up to the this, to this season. Um, you know, we still have a lot of questions to answer, but I guess to answer your question, guys came back motivated. They they want to get they want to get better. They want to they want to win. They want to they want to play pro ball, and you know that's what fall ball is all about: is look, make a little bit of a name for yourself, separate yourself from the pack a little bit, so to speak, on um, you know getting out there and maybe getting first shot in the spring. Practice without Casey Opitz back there. I'm just curious about Michael Turner and his repertoire with all the pitchers, how that's developed since he got here in the fall. Well, between between Michael and Dylan Leach, 
you know, we feel good back there. Um, you know, Michael has had some issues with a hamstring for over a year now, and we've been working with him hard. We actually, you know, he's from Ohio. In the summer after we, we got him signed, we, we got him set up with the Indians doctor, and, you know, everything went good all fall. Towards the end, he kind of hurt something, hurt a little bit. I think he's a little bit nervous always about it. Um, you know, you take that away, it's been pretty good. You know, the pitchers like throwing to him. Um, I don't think they have a problem throwing to Dylan either. So, uh, Michael's full package because he can really hit. And he can really throw and he can really catch. Um, I'm surprised that he's not playing professional baseball right now. And I don't know what went on where he came from, uh, but I'm just shocked that, that he's, you know, not, not playing pro ball. We were very fortunate to get him here. And players, you know, he seems to be one of our more popular guys. They can tell that, you know, he's a, he's a leader and, and he's going to be right in the middle of our lineup. Um, but our catching situation with those two is good. Dylan Leach has made a lot of strides from last year. Last year he was a freshman in high, or a senior in high school, playing behind Casey, trying to learn, maybe a little overwhelmed. And then he comes back this year, and here we bring in another 23-year-old. And, you know, he's, all he's done is work. He didn't complain, ask, and ask a lot of questions, what, why this, why that. you got to give him a lot of credit there. And he's gotten bigger, stronger, and he's better. Um, so I see both of them catching. Ask about Jalen. You mentioned him, but how is he doing post surgery? And then again, continuing that chemistry with Robert Moore up the middle. Yeah, you know, having those two back up the middle, it's it's the best double play combination that we've had here in 20 years, in my opinion. So we're going to have him back for the second year in a row. Uh, you know, Jalen didn't take a ground ball until December. He didn't need to because he can field. Um, we just needed to get him healthy. He got a lot stronger on his lower half through all the. You know, the, the rehab um, didn't do anything with the upper body for the most part. Um, but as far as offensively, what I've seen from him, he's a lot better. And we were disappointed that we didn't get to coach him a whole lot in fall because we felt like, man, if we can, if he can take one more step with the bat, he's going to be a force. Because he, he be, was one of our better hitters down the stretch. The first half of the season, not so much. Here and there, big home run against Louisiana Tech that, you know, won us that game and that extra inning game. But some big hits, but not a lot of hits. Different player now. Just watching, missing it. Sometimes watching's good in our game. You know, it's like sometimes when guys are in slumps or not playing well, I'll, I'll tell them, hey, I'm not upset with you, but you're not going to play today. I want you to just sit over here with me and just slow the game down. And they take a day off and they come back and they're a lot better. Uh, with Jalen, I think he really appreciates the fact that he w that he was injured and he gets to play. He still gets to play. I think he, from what we've seen, his offense is so much better. So it'll be it'll be fun watching him. And one more, you know, we talk sometimes. You have a pulse of like, hey, we're going to be a home run hitting team. We got a lot of power. Hey, this time we might not have that home run power, but we're able to, you know, manufacture runs. Do you have a pulse on where that offense is right now? Yeah, I think that we're going to hit home runs, no doubt. We have, we got most of the power guys back from last year, and we added a few. I mean, you know, we have three transfer hitters, and they all hit the ball a long way. I mean, they're all middle of the order guys. There's three of them. I don't even know if I can get them all in the lineup at the same time. Um, but we're going to, I think that we will hit, and I think, we, I think because we've worked on it so hard and talked about it so much that uh, we should walk more. And, you know, with age, you usually learn the strike zone better and you lay off borderline pitches, you know, uh, early in the count. And with two strikes, you fight off more pitches. And, uh, you know, we're going to strike out some, but everybody does. Our league, the pitching in our league, the velocities in our league, the stuff in our league is incredible. If you look at it, and you know, we, we, we look at a lot of data basically. The average fastball in the SEC over the last few years is, is like not even a mile an hour or less than what the average fastball is in the big leagues. You know, because the average fastball in the big leagues, maybe it's 93.3 and SEC is 92.5. I mean, you talk to Coach Hobbs, he'll tell you all about it, okay? But 
it's amazing. And that's what we deal with in our league. And you go to other leagues and their average fastball is 89-7, 90.2. It's a big difference when you're hitting, believe me. So um, we're going to be every bit as electric as we've been the last couple of years offensively. Dave, where do you think uh, the new facilities are going to help the program the most going forward? Well, yeah, you said the most at the end, so that makes it a little tougher. Um, I'll just say with the development of our players, if you're talking about the most, when I, I mean, you got to walk through it today and you see how nice it is and it all kind of flows once you learn the building. Um, you know, it's like the weight room's right in the middle, built around that with training room and, you know, the, the indoor downstairs with the technology. It just, it makes it easier than running all over the place. Um, Guys, I mean, we pretty much have to kick them out of here at night. They're, they just hang out, which is awesome. That's what we want. Um, you know, on weekends, they're up here when we're, it's off season. And, you know, we've, it's just a development. It, it just makes it a lot easier having these type of facilities. And, you know, with our nutrition center, and they do a great job here. They're, they're in there working and stocking and making sure the guys have everything. And, um, you know, you got to get players. You know, you can coach guys up, but you got to have good players. And this building's going to help us get more players. It's always a loaded question, but do you have a favorite part of the facility? Um, uh, that's a tough question. Like you say, I, I, don't, I don't know if I have a favorite part. I, I can tell you this just about every day I walk in and I just kind of shake my head thinking, wow, this is amazing. And uh, how far has college baseball come in the 20 years I've been here? And I've been coaching college baseball mid-30s, 35 years now plus, somewhere in there. Um, I mean, you just look at the game as a whole. The, the players are bigger, stronger, better. You know, they, they hit the ball farther. They throw the ball harder. They're faster. Um, the facilities across the country are unbelievable compared to what they used to be even 15 years ago. Um, the commitment from administrations all over the country are amazing, even at some of the mid-majors, building some really nice facilities. Fans are involved. you got TV coverage, media coverage. You know, I mean, even this event right here, if you can call it an event, we'll just call it a quick meeting. Uh, you know, 20 years ago, there would have been three people in here. Bob would have been one of them. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's in this, this facility as a whole, everything, and our indoor across the street. I mean, it's it's all part of it. It's amazing. And there's more there's more universities that are looking around, and then they're watching TV and they're seeing our crowds and you know what our league's been doing. And their their fans are jumping in and helping out with uh, some support and finances. And I think it's, I don't think it's going to go away. Coach, you mentioned Connor Nolan earlier. <clears throat> what 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 about him is better that so far this year? Well, if you just talk about Connor physically first, he's in really good shape and he's healthy. You know, last year he hurt himself and didn't go well. When we got back, it didn't go well. Never really 100%. He stayed here all summer. Uh, didn't go out and pitch and got his body in incredible shape. Um, came out in the fall, and so what has he done on the mound? He's throwing the ball harder. He's throwing just as many strikes. You know, a lot of times if you pitch at 90 and you're trying to pitch and you're trying to throw 92 93 you're not going to throw the ball where you want it well now he's throwing the ball 92 93 91 you know last year probably 88 to 91 maybe a little more here and there but it just seems easy for him to throw 91 92 with sink keeping the ball down uh, his secondary stuff is really good but he's got a he's kind of got a power sink and fastball and i like when connor pitches because He's not trying to strike everybody out. He's going to get a ground ball to third or short or whatever, and we can field it and maybe he can stay in the game longer. We can move the game along a little bit, not a lot of full counts. And uh, it's just, to me, it's just better all the way around, everything. You know, need to figure out your rotation and things like that, but what about the field? Are there any specific positions that you're still looking at as, like, unsettled going into the season so far? Well, I don't know exactly who's going to start in the outfield every day yet because there are four or five, maybe six really good options. You know, somebody can DH, um, but you only have one of those. So, uh, you know, you, whenever you, 
you've got to have an athlete in center field. And so one of our best athletes was Caden Wallace. So we were working him out in center right when he got back, and he knew that. We talked to him about it. Even though in summer ball he played right field, but he took a lot of fly balls in center. I think they had a really good center fielder out of Arizona State. I went and watched him play out in the Cape. Um, but uh, he was doing a great job out there. But we just started looking at it, put him in at third for a couple of games, let him work out with the infield a little bit. He was our best third baseman. And that's what he was when we recruited him. And we just said, okay, we're going to go with him there, let him play third. Webb had an incredible fall until he got hurt. I mean, he led our team in about everything. And I'm talking home runs, batting average, stolen bases, you name it. And then he, then he got that, hamstr or that uh, quad issue late, right before our red-white series. And then it, you know, it is what it is. But, uh, you know, that's the position center field, that we have to have a center fielder. Webb's our answer from a defensive standpoint, for sure. Even if he doesn't get off to a good start offensively, that's OK. It's kind of like having a shortstop. If he doesn't hit a whole lot, that's okay. Just field everything and make all the plays. Um, but if he's injured, you know, then you know we're we'll we may not lose as much offense or you know, much offense at all, but we may lose a little defense. So that's probably really my main concern in the field defensively. What's Braden done to get better? You know, he's, Webb. He started with the pretty prolonged slump last year. What did he do to, to get himself better at the plate? And then yep. you mentioned you thought he's the best center fielder you've ever had. You've had Benintendi and Eibner and Fletcher and uh, I mean Franklin. That's a pretty big he's statement, right there I think. With all those guys, you know, if you're talking about center fielders, if you're just talking about running and catching the ball and reading the ball off the bat, there's never been anybody better than Fletcher. Because Fletcher was, he was, he had corner outfield speed, but his instincts were off the charts. I mean, he saw the pitch coming in, and he knew what, pretty much which way to start moving before the, the hitter swung. And he would start leaning that way. It was incredible. Um, just it was incredible there, you know. But, you know, guys like Eibner with really good speed and tremendous arms. And Franklin, you know, played left as a freshman, moves over there, and then we don't skip a beat there. And had Craig Gentry out there for a while, a long time ago. It was incredible. And, We've had a couple other guys out there that, that were amazing. Um, I think you've, if you're going to win in this league, you better be able to catch it in the outfield. So we've got a bunch of guys that can hit, but we've got to play good defense out there. And, you know, you, our corner guys, are they're good corner guys. If you put one of them in center, he's going to be an average center fielder that hits. Uh, we've even had Zach Gregory out there a little bit. He runs well, but he's still fairly new in the outfield. And, He's one of the most improved players on the team as well. So um, I don't know what was the other part of the question. Well, let, let's go back to last year. We opened up in Texas, and I don't know if – does anybody remember where he hit in our order? Game one, he hit cleanup. So we've seen this. And if you look at his numbers from junior college, they were incredible. We get him, to, we get him here. And we're thinking, man, what a great athlete. The, one of the first practices of the year of his first year here, he dives for a ball, makes an incredible catch in left field, and hurts his ribs. Misses most of the fall. So he's had some injuries, and here we go again a little bit. So, I mean, he hasn't really done a whole lot to make himself better. He's good. He was already good, you know. Uh, it's just a matter of getting on the field. So what do we do to get him off to a better start? Maybe we hit him down in the order a little bit and just let him climb the ladder, let him stand, stay down there and hit. So I'll be honest with you, I, we were just in their meeting talking about our lineup. You know, we, yeah, maybe the first couple of guys in the order, you know you, where you want to hit them, but we got a couple three, three and four type hitters and five hole hitters, and we got a bunch of guys. There's going to be guys, I mean, if Jalen Battles is hitting in the eight or nine hole, I thought Jalen coming back this year hit fifth or sixth. And we, right now, he may be hitting eighth or ninth just, just because he's a better hitter than that. Carson Shetty hit nine hole a few years ago and hit about 390 all year. And everyone's telling me I need to move him up. And I told him I was going to, I talked to him about moving up and he said, I want to stay there. And he, he killed it down there. Finally, late in the season, we moved him up to about fifth because he just, we had to. Uh, but, 
we're going to have a deep lineup, and as an opposing pitcher, you're going to have to fight us because we're going to fight you and try to get your pitch count up and get in that bullpen. Anything else? Can you see the field better from the first base dugout? Have you been there enough to kind of – yeah, I mean, we've been in it before. I, I don't think it's all about the same, really. You know, our dugout's going to be a little colder the first half of the season, obviously. That dugout's actually bigger. It's longer. I don't know what happened when they built the stadium. We noticed that if, when we first got here, it's it's longer, and the roof is a little lower. Watch out when you get excited. You might hit your head if you're six foot five. Uh, so I don't know if it's settled over there or what happened, but it's uh, – it's, uh, you know, it's going to be a good setup. I think you guys walked through it. Got new flooring put in it, a lot better, and they're going to cut out part of the bench, put a bat rack in there, and it's supposed to be done hopefully shortly. The area where the coaches hang out is a lot bigger. If you look at the two, it's probably five, six, seven feet bigger. Makes it better for us. Um, they'll have a straight path from the bat rack right up, to, up and out. Um, we can kind of hang in our area. It's it's very comfortable. It's just a little cooler. Second half of the season, it'll be better. Um, but uh, it's all the same to us. We're in the first base dugout on the road all the time. Everybody sees the, the park, and it's got the number one ranking and all these different things. You've seen that. Uh, when you guys built the Fowler Center, obviously you thought that there was more that could be done, and this building is, is a reflection of that. I mean, at, at this point, though, now that you've got the Fowler Center in this building, is this as good as it gets? Is, is there anything you can do to Im improve what, what you've got facility-wise? I think probably the, the only thing that you could really improve are, are things like um, – as far as for a baseball team would be maybe the surface of your field, um, you know, because we're probably, you know, we're probably due for that. You know, a lot of times fields really settle and they get a little bit wavy in the outfield. I think we replaced the infield five or six years ago. We actually have a the two Bermuda, we have two different Bermuda grasses on our field. When they replaced the infield a few years ago, um, there was a new, fancier, better Bermuda grass, and we put that on the infield and all the way around the back. And certain times of the year, you can see it. Um, the outfield has a little thicker blade. Um, it needs to probably all be redone in the future, uh, things like that. But really, probably more than anything, we have what we need to get to get where we're at. I mean, there's always going to be some something technology-wise that will improve your scouting of other teams or whatever. And we try to stay up with that. Um, but I think probably what we're going to need, honestly, and Frank Burles thought I was crazy when I said that in the summer of 2002, we're going to need more seats here. Um, you know, there's people that are not happy that didn't get season tickets, and I don't blame them. And there's people, groups of people that want those skyboxes or suites, whatever you want to call them. And uh, they're probably maybe the most popular suites on campus because we play a lot of games. You get to talk between innings and, you know, it, it is what it is. It's uh, their space to do it. It just takes money. Um, and we just spend a lot of money. And there's other facilities on campus that, that need some things done. And I think for something like that to happen, it would probably really take a group of people to come in and say, hey, here's what we want to do with this money. Because if not, you know, it's probably somebody else's turn on campus to get something done. And softball's been doing a great job. And, you know, I, I feel like that Courtney and them, they, they deserve whatever they need, obviously. And uh, you could go on and on. So we're very happy with where we're at. I would say what, what's going to happen next really will be finding a way to maybe put more people in here. because. There's teams in our league. I think we can get 11,000 plus in here, supposedly. But we could put certain weekends, when you play LSU and Ole Miss and regional, super regionals, we could get 15, 16, 17 in here. I believe that. You know, and I mean, I felt bad for people this year when I heard what some of the tickets were going for. Uh, that's, that's not right, you know? And, uh, it wasn't us charging it. It's whoever got their hands on the tickets. And I guess it's a free world and do what you want. But, you know, when you're hearing that somebody's paying $1,500 to watch a college baseball game, it's a little crazy. I might pay 1500 to go to the Super Bowl if the Chiefs are in it. But other than that, I'm not doing it. So, um, but I think, I think they're going to have to expand it, take it around the left field, go over the top. You've got to keep the area out there for the students in the grass. But maybe they can do something in the right, 
right to as well you know just some some more i think you know a lot of like i guess what i was getting to there's mississippi state and Ole miss and they get 13 14 thousand in their place and i don't think those places are bigger than northwest arkansas so if if you put a good team on the field um they'll show up i'm fine we're good It looks like just a little different angle. <laughs> no, no, I, I meant the, 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 the guys. Your first base. Your, yeah. Oh, my first base. I thought you were talking about that dugout again. I'm like, come on, let's move on from the dugout. Oh, my first baseman. Maybe it's the mask. Man, I can't hear anymore either. What are you talking about? Okay, so first baseman, that's, I mean, it's a great question, Bob. But, uh, right now, um, Peyton Stovall would be our first baseman. You know, he's second baseman, he's shortstop. Um, in high school, he played second base until his senior year because they had a really good shortstop. His senior year, he played short. Uh, I saw him play short in summer baseball. Uh, we, we played him at third this, this past fall. Um, didn't like it a whole lot, I would say. It, it didn't go real good for him at first, uh, but all he did was hit and, and put him at first, and he loved it. He, he likes it over there, and he's good over there. Yeah, he's, you know, he's right at six foot tall, so he's not, you know, as big as maybe some of the first basemen, but if you throw it in the dirt, he's going to pick it. Um, he's going to play second base here in the future. You know, if we still work him at second, but uh, for this year's team, with Robert being at second base, you know, that's, that's not happening. So uh, Peyton's a good teammate, good kid, works hard. And uh, he's he'll be our first baseman. Slavens has been playing right field. He's had a he had a arm issue all fall. It's still bothering him a little bit. Um, he's back playing a little first base, probably more than anything, just because his arm had been bothering him, and now it's not. And now he's thinking, hey, maybe he doesn't want a DH because that's what happens a lot of times when your arm's bothering you. But. Right now, Peyton Stovall is our first baseman, and uh, I, see him, I see him playing a lot. How much does he? Um, I'm good. All right, I'll do it. Okay.